Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again with another video. Today I'm going to compare carbide tip against high speed steel. Now, one thing about carbide tips, uh, they come in various shapes triangle, uh, diamond shape, and a bit of a variation in between. Now, when you go to buy them, uh, you can either ask for 0.4 millimeter radius, 0.8 millimeter radius, but you certainly can't get the radius that I've got here on the high speed steel. So, if we turn around and say that a cutting tip has a larger radius, it should give a better surface finish because that radius, especially on a slow feed, uh, should overlap the little small lines that it puts on there a larger radius should cover that so if your feed rate your speeds and feeds if you slow down your feed rate you should end up with very very fine lines on a carbide tip whereas you use a larger radius like this you should end up uh, with uh, the lines will be overlapped because of the large radius now, I've sharpened this up. It's razor sharp. I run the diamond file over it uh, because the grinding wheel I've got won't give a good enough finish that I like. Uh, you can get really good high-quality wheels that are just uh, specifically for sharpening tools, but the normal home grinder I got, I'm not too, for, too happy with it. Plus, the other thing is, if you're doing it by hand, sometimes you can't get a really good job. You really need a special machine that's got a jig in it that actually holds, or a bit like a chainsaw grinder, you bring the grinding wheel down on top of that with a handle. So there are special machines for grinding and putting angles on high-speed steel. Uh, but uh, for the home user, uh, that's out of reach, so the best thing you can do is grind it by hand, and finish it off by dressing. So what we will do, we'll actually uh, run this carbide tip, it's a brand new uh, tip, we'll run this over and we'll take a picture of it and we'll put it online because it's a little bit hard uh, with a video camera to, to, yeah, it looks nice and shiny and smooth, uh, but I want to compare one against the other. So I'll take a picture uh, after we uh, run the lathe over it and then We'll do the same with this one here and then we'll put the pictures up and then we'll put uh, two pictures side by side and compare them. One of the other things, it's great to use the back of your fingernail because it really will feel the lines. So this is actually quite smooth and this was done with a different carbide bit but roughly the same. Now the only difference that I'm doing, I'm about a half a millimetre below the centre line so certainly that's no good to face off because you get a little bit of a nipple. And how many times have I uh, snapped off the corner, chipped the corner off because I wasn't at the right height. So now what I do, I always have one of these uh, car, uh, high speed steel to uh, face off. So we're going to run the car, uh, carbide bit over this, have a look at it, and then we'll do the same thing with this and see which one wins. This should win. Uh, the only thing is uh, you can't just change the corner around when these go blunt you've got to spend a little bit of time grinding them whereas your carbide bits uh, you just take the screw out throw it away and put a new one in there but nonetheless these will last much longer than the carbide bit because the cost of a carbide bit can be up to ten dollars whereas this piece of 10 millimeter high speed steel is only about seven or eight dollars so these will last a lot longer than this just based on the price alone okay so we just turned this and it feels reasonably smooth and we'll just uh put a picture of it up now so if you have a look you can see that the surface finish is okay but it's not brilliant so that's keeping the cutting tip about a half a millimeter below the uh center line Certainly don't try and face off with it. Start facing off there. You'll snap the carbide tip. Done it many times. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to swap the tool in for, and we'll just bring it around. We'll bring the tool in around now 
for this one here and we'll just set it up and we'll uh, uh, hope to get a much better finish okay so we're going to do a cut hopefully this comes out a lot better it's looking better just tell by looking at it it's one of the reasons I like uh, high-speed steel so you can customize it so easily then the other thing is if you run a little bit of emery paper over this it will come up quite good okay so we've got to stop there Wow, that's definitely, gee, that is a lot better. That is really good. That just goes to show you what a radius will do. I'll just move this out of the way. That come up fantastic. Not a mirror finish, but nonetheless, it just proves that are using a large radius and... In a previous video, I did show using the high-speed steel with a large radius uh, on there. So that came up pretty smooth. You run your fingernail along it, you can barely feel anything. So that was the previous one that was there. It may have more of a shine on it, but it's not as smooth as this. And we'll take a picture of that and... You can judge for yourself. Okay, so we'll put a picture up screen. Now, if you look closely to the part, the first part that we did, the first pass, you'll notice right on the left-hand side, it looks shinier, but the lines are deeper in there. Because what I said before about a little tiny sharp uh, point will leave a lot of lines. Whereas if you have a radius... It'll get rid of those lines. It's not as shiny, but you can feel that with your finger. And if you run a bit of emery paper over that, that'll come up really well. So what we will do, we'll just rub some emery over there, about 800 grit. And you can see what that comes up like. To me, for, for a, a mild steel, for a very soft steel, that's come up excellent. And all as we've done is got a large radius and the cutting tip is about a half a millimetre below the centre line. So you can get good results with different various grades of mild steel. Uh, there are a couple of different grades out there, so not everything's exactly the same when you buy steel. It comes from different sources and it can be made slightly different, the variations that you do get in steel. But nonetheless, it's mild steel and it doesn't turn as good as, as, as say, uh, 4140 or something like that okay so we just ran some 800 paper over that and while this side here does look shinier you get your fingernail do the fingernail test your fingernail slot I'll see whether you can hear it Should be able to hear that. We'll get the camera a little bit closer. All right, see if we can get that closer. So get me fingernail here. So you can't hear much. So might be able to see that a little bit better. Okay, so what we will do now, we'll put a picture up of that. We'll take a close-up picture of it, and you can see the difference. So the right side, this side it's here, is definitely smoother than the left side. The left side, which is only about six millimetres wide, it may look shinier, but the lines are more noticeable, whereas the lines on the right-hand side, you can, you can hardly notice them. Nonetheless... You won't get a perfect finish on this type of steel. You need really good uh, tool steel. It's got a little bit of lead in it, and you'll get a much better finish. But nonetheless, the two things that we've done here is lower the tool height 
from the centre line by a half a millimetre, 0 0.5, and we're using high speed steel as a radius, which gives a much better finish. Plus, the other thing that we did, we had an upward rake that's also on the, uh, we'll actually see if we can see that upward rake on there. You may be able to see that. Just see if we bring the camera around. You can see how that's traveling up in the air. Plus we've got plenty of clearance on here. Very sharp edge. I did that with the diamond uh, stone. That come up fantastic. Still nice and sharp. You can just feel it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.